So when I was about 18, uh, my choir, Evangelistic Church of God in Christ, Mass Choir, did an album called The Anointing. Well, I went to visit my uncle, who was my pastor most of my life, and he gave me the album and I was listening to it. And I was so overwhelmed. I, I laughed, I cried, like the ugly cry. I led a few songs on the album and I was listening to what I sounded like at 18. And I was like, if I only could have just been more optimistic about what it would be. I was just so overwhelmed with, am I going to sing? What am I going to become? And who will I marry? And what will my life be? And will I get it right? Will I be lame? Will I be a loser? I was 18 stressed out about what it's going to, what my life was going to be. When I say I can genuinely look back over my life and say thank you for the lessons that I've learned, for the things that didn't feel good, that stretched me and pulled me and made me better. I am so grateful that God knows what he's doing and I don't. And that I've learned to really trust him. I mean like sincerely, truthfully trust him, not tripping, not, not, oh, I hope it goes right. I don't even say I hope it goes right. I know it's going to go right. No matter if it goes the way I want, the day that I want, God is going to work it out for my good because his word says that and I stand on that. But I have so much love in my heart for where I come from, for the people I was in the choir with, for the people that spoke into my life for the people that pray for me. That Evangelistic Mass Choir album, you couldn't tell us nothing. We thought we were professional. Do you hear me? In our blue and white robes. We won the McDonald's Gospel Fest in 1990. We recorded the year after that. My church said the McDonald's Gospel Fest winners until 2012. I think they still saying the McDonald's Gospel Fest winners. But it was such a beautiful time in my life. My young years were filled with people who held me accountable, who loved Jesus. Like I, I had church friends. Like So if you got too far, they'd be like, uh-uh, be careful, homie. You don't want to Girl, you don't want to go to hell. Like, it was a, like, you know, you know, it was a little off. It was a little re religious, you know what I'm saying? I, but I thank God for just that level of, I don't know, just that church experience that I don't think many young people get today. Don't deprive your children of going to church. And darn it, stop making it their choice and their option. I didn't have the option of going to choice, going, going to church. I went because I had to, because my mama told me to. But I learned and gained so much. I grew so much. There's so much that's in my life today as a result of that time. Those teenage years are so crucial. The things that you take in and listen to. Well, it was different for me because I couldn't listen to secular music. Um, so even by the time I was grown and did start listening to it, I still was very timid about it. I wasn't eager to listen to things that I felt would disrupt my spirit. And I'm so grateful for that. So that's my love talk for the day. I'm so grateful for how I was raised, for the love they show, show, showed me, the prayers um, the accountability, how they didn't take no mess, how we had to be in Bible study and we had to pray and we had to love other people. We went out, we were uh, witnessing to people and passing out tracts. It was really, it was great. I didn't miss a beat. I don't regret none of it. I'm grateful for every single bit of it. That's my love talk.